1958, mobsters connected with the Genovese crime family carried out the particularly brutal but rarely discussed murder of businessman Samuel Volkov. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organized crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at a vicious murder carried out by mobsters associated with the Genovese crime family, including one who would eventually become the family's consigliere. On June 6th, 1958, the body of 42-year-old Samuel Volkov was found in the parking lot of a New York City gas station. His murder had been horrific. As one newspaper reported, tortured and finally choked to death, Samuel Volkov, 42, partner in an interstate meat transportation firm, was found dumped on the parking lot of a West Side gas station yesterday. Baffled police in early investigation found themselves confronted with a crime apparently without motive. It was, in the words of one high-ranking official, one of the most brutal slayings in recent years. Volkov's body was found at 6.45am at the rear of the L&S gas station, 790 11th Avenue at 55th Street by Al Geiger, the manager. Samuel Volokhov's autopsy would provide further details regarding his horrendous murder. As one newspaper stated, An autopsy performed by Dr Milton Helpburn, medical examiner, disclosed that Volokhov had met a terrible death. He suffered for hours, said Helpburn. There were hemorrhages of the eyes and of the back of the tongue. Bits of hemp clung to the neck. All this indicates that whoever strangled him alternately tightened and loosened the rope over a period of hours. The official report listed the death as homicidal, caused by asphyxiation and strangulation. Helpburn said that Volkov's hands had been bound so tightly behind his back that circulation had been stopped causing the blueness of the right hand noticed by Geiger and the cops. So, who exactly was Samuel Volkov? According to some sources, Samuel Volkov was born on Christmas Day, December 25th, 1916, in Montreal, Canada. His father's name was Koppel and his mother's name was Leah. At some point, Samuel Volkov moved to Brooklyn and would marry a woman named Doris. Samuel and Doris would have two children, Iris and Gerald, known as Jerry. The family of four lived at 334 East 91st Street. Samuel Volkov was a successful businessman who was a partner in the Only Refrigeration Transportation Company. This business was a trucking company for meat transportation, with an office based at 345 West 14th Street. According to one newspaper, Volkov's business, obtained contracts to haul meat between Chicago and Philadelphia in leased trucks. The office in New York was only a business office, with the principal operating centre and office in Chicago run by Volkov's partner, Sidney Ginsburg. So, why was Samuel Volkov tortured and brutally murdered? And how was the Genovese crime family involved? Towards the end of his working day, on the 5th of June 1958, a man claiming to be a detective walked into Samuel Volkov's office and said that he needed to come with him and answer some questions. Samuel Volkov then telephoned his wife and told her that he would be late home. As one newspaper reported, Mrs Volkov had received a phone call from her husband at 5.30pm Thursday, advising her to have dinner with the children without waiting for him. Volkov had told her he had an appointment to talk with the detective from the district attorney's squad and would not get home until about 8.30pm. However, Samuel Volkov would never make it home. His body found strangled to death the following morning. Samuel Volkov's murder would remain a mystery for several years until Jewish hitman Harold K. O. Konersberg became an informant from prison in the mid-1960s. 
Konigsberg was a mobster primarily associated with the Bonanno crime family and worked predominantly with powerful New Jersey-based Bonanno mobster Joseph Jobayon Ziccarelli. But Konigsberg was also associated with members of the Genovese crime family's Greenwich Village crew. Konigsberg would tell the FBI that he, along with Genovese family mobsters Lawrence Larry Fab Dentico and George Martinelli, were responsible for Samuel Volkov's murder. The FBI file reads, Harold Konigsberg furnished the following information concerning Sam Volkov, whose body was found in New York City on June 6, 1958. Konigsberg stated that he had been told by Larry Dentico and George Martinelli that the individual now known to him as Sam Volkov, who had an office on 14th Street in New York City, was believed to be holding Johnny Earl's money and jewels from various scores. Johnny Earl, who was mentioned in the FBI file, was a powerful and greatly feared mobster who ran a violent gang on the west side of Manhattan. Johnny Earl was very close with crime boss Vito Genovese, and although not an Italian, sources said that Vito was very fond of Earl. I have made a previous video on the life and times of Johnny Earl, and the link to this is in the comments below. Genovese soldier turned informant George Barone had previously been a member of Johnny Earl's gang, and would state that Larry Dentico had also worked for Johnny Earl before becoming a made man. Larry Dentico, who was previously mentioned, had been in Johnny Earl's gang, felt that Earl had held back money that he was owed from various scores from when he worked for him. Although some sources indicate that Larry Dentico was still working for Johnny Earl at this time. It appears that Dentico received information that Samuel Volkov knew the location of Johnny Earl's money and jewels. It is however unclear as to why Larry Dentico and George Martinelli believed that Samuel Volkov possessed this information. The FBI file continues. Konigsberg stated that Larry Dentico and George Martinelli and he were in a car, Larry's Cream and Orange Mercury on 14th Street, New York City, and George Martinelli got out and went into Sam's office. After about half an hour, George brought Sam to the street and put him into the car. Larry told Harold Konigsberg to get in the front seat, and Larry took a pair of handcuffs out of the glove compartment, gave them to George to put on Sam. From this account, it appears that it was Genovese mobster George Martinelli who posed as a detective and managed to convince Sam Volkov to come along with him. This answers a question posed by the NYPD in 1958 after Volkov's murder. As one newspaper reported, a number of immediate tasks confronted police. Who was the district attorney's detective with whom Volkov had met? The DAs of New York City all denied having sent anyone to confer with Volkov, who was unknown to them. Police sent out queries to DAs in Jersey for possible involvement, which they doubted. The detective, they theorised, was not a detective at all and conceivably was the murderer, posing as a cop. Konigsberg's account of the murder would continue in the following FBI file. Konigsberg stated he did not know anything about Sam, but he knew as soon as Sam got in the car that they were going to kill him. George questioned Sam concerning Johnny Earl's money and jewels, but Sam denied knowing anything concerning them. He stated that they drove to New Jersey to Abe Mizrah's house at River Edge, New Jersey, and took Sam into the house, where they tied his hands and feet. Konigsberg then provided details of the torture that Samuel Volkov endured. Larry then put a rope around Sam's neck, which he alternately tightened and loosened, and questioned Sam about the money and jewels. Konigsberg stated that he told Larry and George that, this guy isn't going to tell you anything, because he doesn't know anything. Let's kill him now. Konigsberg stated that Larry and he each took an end of the rope and pulled until Sam died.
Again, this account matches the findings of the medical examiner who had performed Volkov's autopsy, who said, Whoever strangled him alternately tightened and loosened the rope over a period of hours. Following Samuel Volkov's violent murder, Konigsberg then details how his body was disposed of. The FBI file reads, Konigsberg stated that they then stripped Sam's body of all clothing, put him in the car and drove back to New York via the George Washington Bridge. They threw the body out into a gas station lot in a section of town where Larry wanted to put the heat on someone else. Samuel Volkov's murder had further tragic consequences for his family. On hearing about his violent death on the radio, his older sister Goldie had a heart attack and died. The brother and sister were buried next to each other, just three days after his killing. A June 9, 1958 newspaper would write, Murder victim Samuel Volkov, 42, and his sister, Mrs. Goldie Milgram, 53, who died of a heart ailment upon learning of her brother's torture strangling, were buried side by side yesterday in New Montefiore Cemetery, Pine Lawn, Long Island. Later that month, Larry Dentico would tell members of the Genovese crime family's Greenwich Village crew that Johnny Earl was trying to kill him and his wife. A meeting was then held, which included the likes of Vincent the Chin Giganti, Thomas Tommy Wine Eberly, and Anthony Tony Bendestrollo, to decide what to do about Johnny Earl. The group decided that they needed to kill Johnny Earl, and Tony Bendestrollo took the request to family boss Vito Genovese, who reluctantly gave his authorization. As mentioned, I've covered the life and murder of Johnny Earl in a previous video. The link to this is in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.